start off. You you go in January or February for your yearly checkup with your doctor. A primary care physician, you're not going to have to pay a copay to see. It's zero on the zero plans. You're not going to pay anything for all the preventive care that most people get at no cost. Prevention meaning mammograms and colonoscopies and PSA testing, diabetes, uh, blood testing, things like that. Um, now let's, for instance, if you go see a specialist, so I don't know, you fell off a ladder, broke your ankle, and now you're seeing a specialist to get that right. The specialist would charge you between $40 and $50 copay. And then maybe that person sent you to therapy, physical therapy. You're going to pay $20 to $50 per visit for physical therapy. So usually when you start therapy, you're going three days a week for the first couple weeks. So it can get a little pricey for some people to do that, to go to therapy. But you're not paying a premium, so you have to look at that too. You're not paying a premium for your health care there. If you go in the hospital on a Medicare Advantage plan, you're going to pay a hospital copay typically for the first to six days in the hospital. And they're running anywhere from $310 a day to $350 a day. Again, we do know that most of the time when you go to the hospital today, you're, you're out in two days at the max. I mean, unless it's something very, very serious. So you're not paying a premium, but you are paying co-pays. But, and with the Advantage plan, you have a maximum out-of-pocket for the year. So a typical maximum out-of-pocket price for a PPO Advantage plan would be about $6,000 a year. So once the year starts, the plan will keep track of, okay, he went to a specialist, it was $50. He went to therapy, it was $20 copay. Um, he had to have an MRI. That uh, could be $100 to $250 copay. So the plan tallies up all those copays throughout the year. And if you hit $6,000, then you pay no more for the rest of the year. But it resets again in January, every January. What can you do to protect yourself from the highest copays of Medicare Advantage, which are the hospital copay, the copay for skilled nursing if you stay over 20 days. That's this year is $188 a day. And if you get cancer, because we know if you take chemotherapy treatment, you will have to pay 20% of the chemotherapy drug because it's under Part B drugs. That could get you right up to your six grand quickly. And if your chemo ran over to the next year, like let's say it happened late in the year and you went to the next year, you could spend another <coughs> few thousand dollars. So the way to protect yourself from those highest copays of Medicare Advantage would be to add a hospital indemnity plan. That's under number two. And they pay you back. You get the bill for your two days in the hospital, maybe $650, you send it off, you submit it to the hospital indemnity company, and they pay you back. They will typically pay you up to 10 days back. They will also pay you back for skilled nursing co-pays, and they will add a cancer rider onto that indemnity plan anywhere from, some people want 6,700, so it's a little over that maximum for the year. Some people want 10,000, because we know that if you did get cancer, it likely is gonna run into another calendar year, and so 10,000 would give you an extra 4,000 to help with your co-pays for the next year, or to help you pay for other services that you might have co-pays for, like your MRIs or your diagnostic testings.
it could help you with those co-payments also. And right now, hospital indemnity with a cancer rider would run you about $68 a month. So your total there would be two thirty-eight ten for the month. And then the last way to get your Medicare, the third option is just a Medicare Advantage plan on its own. A lot of people <coughs> opt for that because they say, I've saved money and if I have a bad year, I can handle it. If I have a couple bad years where I have to pay 4500 to 6000 out of my pocket, I can do that. They'll be willing to take that gamble. Some people are not gamblers. They want the sure thing <laughs> paid for, and that's what they will get. A couple other things that I wanted to mention to you are we have um, Brad, you talked about the, the IRMA, the Income Related Monthly Adjustment. I have papers up on the front desk about this. If you are a higher income earner, when you take your Medicare, you're going to get an upcharge for Medicare Part B and for Medicare Part D. And these charts show you where you will fall as far as if you will get an additional charge. Mm -hmm. It's a two year look back. So if you're gonna take your Medicare in 2022, they're gonna look at your adjusted gross income from 2020. And then you will, and trust me, you will be notified of your charge like you did through the mail from Social Security, you'll be charged. So you can plan on it with these forms if you want to take one with you. So they will add a Part B and a Part D upcharge. And the chart is based on single or married or married filing separately. So jointly, separately, or single. And it will give you the IRMA charge for the month. Yes. Okay, so um, in looking at it, I was surprised because I didn't think we were, you know, the income was there. But there's um, provision where you can appeal those things. Where you can, on, on both the, the forms I've gotten, it says you can file an appeal, they'll review it. But there was and, like a life change thing. Eh, mm -hmm. Well, I, I got laid off. So. You may want to do that. So. You have like 60 or 90 days to do that. You can do that online because it was confusing to me about. I would definitely encourage you to do that. Yeah. I think you can do it online. If not, I'll get you the form. Yeah, well, it's got, a, it's got a phone number there, but I know whenever I call the government, I sit online for right. an hour and Yeah, half. you will. Um, so. I had another customer who, right at the beginning of COVID, was laid off. And he was already over 65. And um, he would have paid an upcharge of probably four or five hundred a month. Yeah, this was six. Mine, mine's sixty-eight bucks extra a month. Right. But it's still it's like okay, I don't want to pay him any more than I got to. So. Right. So he was able to get that um, changed where he didn't have to pay it at all. Do they look at that every year? Yes. Okay. It's a two-year look back. Yeah. This was so, back to two thousand twenty. That's right, 2020. So you know, when you first retire, they're gonna look back and then after a couple years into retirement, your income usually drops. But for some people, it does not. Mm -hmm. And um, then you're, you would be paying. But it really starts at, for a single person, if you're more than 91,000 but less than 114,000 a year, that's when they're going to start upcharging you after 91,000 a year. For a married couple, <coughs> it would be 182 or something. Yep, 182 yeah. to 228. And then it just keeps going gradually up to the point where 
you could actually pay as much as $578 a month for your Part B if you earned greater than $750,000 a year. But that doesn't include withdrawing from a 401 or an IRA, right? That's just if you earn income. It's adjusted gross income. It's based on your adjusted gross income from your taxes. So it would probably include your IRA. Mm -hmm. Yep. So they put you every way. Oh yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they gotcha. Sorry. Yeah, and people. No, that's, <laughs> that sums it up to you. <laughs> I will say no more. <laughs> that's one thing to be on the lookout for. And trust me, if you owe it, they're going to send you a letter, mm -hmm. right, Brad? And, and, and let I you know. I can't believe how much mail I get. Like twice a week, I get a letter of some kind. Right, and if you think you might be in the, you know, grab one of the charts at the door here and take it with you so you can see if you think you would be there. Yeah, my um, wife was there, and she had to prove that our income was lower than what they said it was. So we had to send in our 1040. Yep. Yeah. You, know. you do. Yes. Um, also. When you're getting ready to apply for your Medicare, if you already have Medicare Part A and you decided to continue working past 65, a lot of people may have coverage through a spouse's health insurance, then you would delay your Part B. And if you've already got your Part B and didn't realize it, you can contact the Medicare and have that shut off until you're ready. Okay, there's no reason to pay the 17010 if you're on your spouse's health insurance. Because that's like that's like paying twice. Mm -hmm. So have it shut off and when you're ready, then there's forms, there's two forms, the 40B that you would have to I have all of these if you need them to take home, these forms that you would fill out for your medical, for Part B. And those are up at the front also, or actually, yeah, I think those are up front too. I know you're gonna need those. Yep. Well, I signed up, I signed up for B because in, Everything I read, it said you will have a permanent penalty if you don't sign up for this at the right time. At so. the right time, but you have credible coverage, so you're fine, as long okay. as you have credible coverage. All right. mm -hmm. And then once you lose your credible coverage, then you have, I think, six months to get into a plan, but only 63 days to get into a prescription plan. So. Wow. That's something to consider too. So most people fill those forms out in anticipation of retirement. Like you know you're going to end in December 31st, so you'd fill those forms out a couple months in advance. And there's a remark section right in there where you would write, I want my Part B effective January 1st of 2023 or whatever the date would be that you want <coughs> and we're we're here to help you with that too i've helped people <coughs> sign up for their um a and b online people who aren't computer literate and um we provide that service at, at no charge so it's probably safe to assume part b increases every year well this year it was a humongous jump. Went from 148.50 to 170.10. Lucky us. That does not usually happen. It's only been a, a few dollars a year, you know, like five. Yeah. But this year, but you know, they're working on trying to reverse that right now. Because people are very unhappy. Increase Social Security. Yeah. It was kind of an offset. Right, they increased Social Security 5.9%, but then they really upped your Medicare Part B premium. So, sorry about that. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about was a program called Extra Help. 
and extra help is a program that will help people pay for a portion of their prescription drug premium on Medicare and if you qualify it can lower your co-payments for your drugs. So for instance a person that qualifies for extra help may pay zero copay for drugs. They might pay a dollar thirty, three dollars and sixty-five cents, and for a brand name drug, I think it's nine sixty-five this year. That would be your maximum for brand name drug. But to qualify for extra help, you would have to fall into the income guideline of this program, which is run through the Social Security administration. So there's a whole battery of questions. How much do you make? What's your income? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I help people, and so does Morgan, apply for extra help right on the computer. We'll print it off for you and we'll ask you some income and resource questions. Your income has to be um, $15,510 a year for a single, or, I'm sorry, that's the resources, $15,510 or $30,950 for a married couple. As far as income goes, they just came out with this new guideline for the income, let me get to it. Yeah. Yep. $20,385 for an individual or $27,465 for a couple, a married couple. So if you, if you or anybody you know who's on Medicare, if you think they would qualify for this plan, it's a huge help for people to get a reduced cost for prescription drugs. And the other, the second part of this is if you qualify for extra help, they refer you on to something called the Medicare Savings Program. The Medicare Savings Program can eliminate that Part B premium, you know, the 170, 10 a month, it can help reduce it either partially or in full based on your income. So for people who are of lower income, $170 is a lot of money. So this is up there, this flyer, and if you know people that you think might possibly qualify, give it to them or have them call one of us and we can help them apply. Okay, any questions? Anybody? Uh, On any of it. Go ahead. Sure, okay. So I want to know more about you and the people we see advertising on TV all the time. Okay. Because I get the impression at times that they're there hawking, let's say, Humana. Right. Healthcare. Mm -hmm. But then I hear about other people who are out there who are offering information and sell 10 different programs and there's no cost if you would to us, but I get the impression you get reimbursed by the insurance company Absolutely. for that. So will you explain how all that works? Yep, we're both independent agents licensed through state of Michigan and we have to take a Medicare exam every year and every carrier that we are certified with, we have to take exams for them as well. And um, we do not charge a fee for our services ever. We're local. We both live in Metamora. I'm a member of the Oxford Chamber, the Metamora Chamber, also the Lapeer Chamber. Um, I'm with a couple business networking groups, one in Oxford. Um, I'm with the Kiwanis Club in Lapeer. We're very um, cemented into this community. Um, Medicare is our specialty. We sit down and talk to you. Yes, we get paid by the carriers. That's how we make our living. But 
we do a lot of giving back to our community as far as giving these seminars at no cost to the township. We do them for Springfield Township. We do it for Oxford Township. Um, I speak at some different community groups in um, Lapeer, in Metamora. You, we have an office in Metamora. We also have an office in Shelby Township and one in Sports Creek. So we have availability to meet with people. Um, we spend typically an hour and a half to two hours with a person who is new to Medicare, educating you like we did tonight, but also talking about your doctors and your finances and what would be the best choice for you. I mean, we're not going to tell you what to do, but we're going to hopefully provide you with all the information you need to make a solid choice. What about us providing information you're going to need to help us? Like, yep. um, is there a questionnaire or something we can fill out beforehand? Or We usually just do that when we sit down. When you and meet. I usually will say, bring your list of doctors, bring your specialists, um, bring your list of prescriptions. Because every Advantage plan and every standalone prescription <laughs> drug plan has a formulary. And believe it or not, they're all different. So one carrier has one formulary, one has another. One might have uh, insulin at a certain price, and the other is a different price. So depending on what your needs are, if you're a person who has some expensive medications, we're going to shop for the best plan with the best prices for you, and of course, with a Advantage plan, we have to make sure that your doctor's in network with your plan. So like you were talking about the UAW giving you the PPO plan, and I'm sure when you retire, they're probably gonna offer you a couple plans. You wanna make sure that your doctors, especially if they're doctors you wanna hang on to, you love, you've been to for years, you wanna make sure that they're in the network with you. So the difference between us is we are not captive, captive agents. We don't work for just one company. We work for all the biggest companies in Michigan. We also work with companies that provide plans for people on Medicare and Medicaid. We help people um, that have special needs as far as their health. So. We don't sell just one plan. I'm pretty knowledgeable in all the plans to know, um, to show you different things. So it's, I think the best thing you could do is to sit down with somebody, local number one, who can offer you a variety of plans because if you're dealing with a captive agent, you're only gonna get a small offering of what they have. Does that answer it? Certainly does. Okay. So along that line, gentleman back there mentioned UAW. We've got MEA teachers. Yep. So there's all kinds of different things and you're well versed on. Yes. So our, how we work, and I work with Kathy Seabold. She is the Medicare guru of this area. She's been doing it a long time. She trains me <coughs> and we never, ever would change somebody who has UAW coverage or teachers because if you move someone out of that their chances of being able to go back more than likely are slim to none so never let somebody try to change you out of your employer gifted plan that just wouldn't make sense unless it was there are a couple of the electrician, um, what do they call them, the Brotherhood, IBE. the IBEW, some of their plans really, you could do better by not going with the plan, but that's individual. But most of the retirement plans that an employer offers you are great plans. Yes? Okay. Now, Something I heard tonight that it never dawned on me before is that even though we're married, he may be on one plan, 
and I would be on a different plan. You could. Mm -hmm. All right, but would he be covered under my retirement with the school, or is that completely different? Well, so I'll, here's a situation that I encountered. A woman was retiring from Detroit schools. She opted for their PPO Medicare Advantage plan. She was in pretty good health. Her husband, however, was in very poor health. And instead of taking the PPO Advantage plan, he opted for a health reimbursement okay. account where they, the school just gave $115 a month flat and he wanted a Medicare, a Medicare supplement. Okay. He had major health issues and needed um, more comprehensive coverage. Okay. So, but usually, I think with the teachers, you're probably just going to be offered the Advantage plan. I don't know. I don't know if they have the health reimbursement account or not. I don't know. Either. I didn't know that it was any different. So I, I've learned a lot. Too. Right. Right. Any other questions? So. You're going to turn 65 in September. When should you start signing up? Okay, are, are you uh, employed? No. He is. Okay. But well, neither of us will be before we turn 65. You won't be employed? Employed. No. We'll both be retired by April 1st. Okay, and then are you going to do COBRA? Yes. Uh, well, not, not a COBRA, but yes. I'm going to stay on my company health care plan. Until 65, they'll allow me to pay. Oh, nice. So okay. basically, what comes out of my paycheck now, I'll pay. Okay. Will either of you draw Social Security prior to 65? No. No. So you will have to apply for your Medicare. So I always re recommend two months before the first day of your birth month to apply. It's very easy. You go to ssa.gov. And then once you get to the home page on the bottom corner, it says um, Medicare. Click on that, and then there will be a little prompt. Do you want to apply for retirement benefits, or do you want to apply for just Medicare? Then you would hit that one, and then fill everything out. As long as you have a Social Security account in place online, um, then you're good, or you have to open one, you know, make one, right? make an account. So two months? Right. I would. Can you do it earlier? Like You can. Maybe three months. You can do, yeah, you could apply three, three months, months. Okay. if you want. Just because, you know, sure. you don't forget. <laughs> right. Won't forget. Right. And one thing we didn't talk about was the late enrollment penalty. Okay, if you turn 65 and you don't have credible coverage through an employer or a spouse <coughs> employer, and you say, okay, I'm not going to get Medicare Part B. I'm just going to go along for whatever reason, the way I am, I, <laughs> and you're going to be charged 10% uh, late enrollment penalty forever. for every yeah That's nice. for every year that you're late one good thing that really happened that was great in um, 2021 that President Trump brought about was that senior um, health model for the insulin so now seniors certain insulins they don't pay more than $35 a month. That's been huge for some people on insulin because insulin was so expensive. People had to choose between food and their insulin. If you would like to stay and talk individually about <coughs> any questions you have, we'll be happy to try to answer your questions. If you would like some of the forms up front, feel free to take them. Um, if we want to make an appointment, um, yeah. just call the office? Or? Yeah. Okay. And you've got my number. Yep. Um, in the folder or Morgan's, you can call us. Okay. And we always answer.